Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Bill and I'm glad you've joined us for this crash course on a beginner's guide to Lexio Divina. And I am far from a expert in this topic. So we have brought in a ringer, uh, Elizabeth <laughs> Roti, who's gonna uh, share some of her uh, experience and passion um, about this discipline with us. And we're really grateful to have Elizabeth with us tonight. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. So uh, let's dive right in. Can you just help us to understand what Lexio Divina is? Sure. And actually, I'm going to screen share with you guys a PowerPoint. Just a moment. Whoops. Getting a, getting a preview. Okay. Um, all right. Lectio Divina. Um, it literally means the divine reading. Uh, and, and Lectio Divina is not scripture study, but rather it's a contemplative practice of hearing and processing scripture. It's one way to hear God and engage with him via the word. Um, and it's a really helpful um, tool for us to remember that the Bible is living and active and God wants to encounter us there. It has its origins in the earliest centuries of the church. It became a monastic practice in the sixth century. And while it's ancient, it has never stopped being used and it's accessible for anyone. I think it's actually pretty simple and really enjoyable. I do this practice personally and I've led my staff team and my students through it. And it usually is a very well received practice. Um, there are four main steps involved with Lectio, and they're meant to draw you successively deeper into the scripture and in your engagement with God. Usually a short passage is read, and it's read four times over with the different steps included each time. So I'm going to give you a preview of the steps. Um, so the first step would be to listen to the passage. So you're taking in the feast, and you're paying attention to what particular words or phrases stand out to you. And then in the second reading, you have an opportunity to meditate or chew on those particular words or phrases that stood out to you, taking time to mull them over. And then the third reading is an opportunity to pray, to speak to God about what has been standing out to you. And in the fourth reading, you contemplate, rest and savor in the silence and with your interaction with God and his word. So that is an intro to Lectio Divina. <laughs> awesome. I don't know if you want to keep that slide up there or not, but um, I, I know that preparation is really important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to dive in cold. So what are some of the things that you do to, to prepare? Yeah, so... Um, these are some ways that I would personally suggest to prepare, um, and you may have some that are important to you as you encounter God in scripture. Um, but I would recommend paying attention to your space and your posture and to have paper with you. So um, choose a good space where you'll be undistracted um, and can easily enter into the presence of God. And also be in a posture where you're comfortable, but you can also engage. So not a posture where you're going to fall asleep. Um, and have a journal and some paper and a pen ready. And then secondly, prepare the passage. Know ahead of time what you're going to read. Um, and usually a short, short passage, as I shared earlier, is best for this practice. <coughs> and then lastly, slow down and invite. So take a deep breath and relax. Slow down. Invite the Holy Spirit into your time of prayer. And take a moment to remember that the word you are holding is living and active. And then begin. Thanks for that reminder that posture and just our physical bodies is really important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, could, could you show us how this works and just actually like walk us through an experience of Lexio Divina? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let's do the preparation. So if you are not in an undistracted place um, or in the right posture, feel free to get up now and move. We'll take a minute to do that. If you don't have pen and paper, feel free to grab that. Does anybody need a minute? Looks like you all showed up ready for class. That's great. <laughs> um, wonderful. All right. Well, then um, 
take a minute to slow down, take a deep breath. And I will pray on behalf of us. Um, Holy Spirit, thank you that you are with us. We welcome you here. Um, we welcome you to be engaging with us in this time. Thank you that you speak to us through the word. Um, Lord, would you meet each one of us deeply and open us to what you want to share with us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Awesome. And then just take a moment, moment of silence to remember that the word we're going to read is holy and living and active. All right, is everybody ready? Great. So we're going to be reading through um, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. And I'll have the passage displayed for the first read through. Um, and then it won't be up there for the next three. So I encourage you to just listen and um, take that time to like auditorily take in the words or phrases that are standing out to you. Um, and then for the next phases, I will have um, the steps um, on the screen so that you know what's going on. Um, I've included a few questions for each step um, that you can feel free to use or not use if that's not how God is leading you um, through that particular step. Um, and if you would like to use them, I encourage you to use one. Um, we're, our time is limited. So I will actually be timing us through each step as well. So um, feel, feel free to fully engage because I'll be tracking the time for us. Sound good? All right, well, let me pull up my timer and I will read. Also, is everyone muted? Okay. Great. All right, let us begin. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proven genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So I'll take the next couple of minutes to just take in the feast of the scripture.
Okay. We'll move on to our second reading. And this time we'll be meditating. So paying closely, uh, close attention to those words or phrases that stood out to you. And you could ask the question to yourself, what does the text say to me? How does it impact or influence my own life? Where does it resonate? And then rest on that. So I will read the passage again and um, lead you to it. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that could never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine, and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay, we're going to move on to the third reading. And this time um, is a time of prayer, sharing with God uh, what emotions the text shares, what questions you have, anything you want to express to him. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the, until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We'll move on to our last reading. This time is the space to savor and rest in your interaction and consider what difference this text or this interaction will make in your life. All right. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him 
and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay, let me just pray for us and then I'm going to um, send us into a time of sharing. Lord, thank you for um, this time of uh, resting in your scripture, of hearing from you, um, Lord, of the ways that you've engaged us personally. Lord, thank you for the gift um, that you give us in this way. Pray this in your name. Amen. All right, so I'm gonna send us into breakout rooms in a minute of pairs um, so that you have an opportunity to share with someone um, what you've experienced. You're just briefly gonna share um, anything that the Lord brought up that you would like to share um, to bring him glory or to have um, a brother or sister in Christ be with you in that. And then you're only gonna have four minutes each. So share briefly and then save a couple of minutes to pray for each other at the end as well. So if you give me just a minute, um, wasn't able to all right welcome back friends i i hope that was nourishment for your soul that last half hour or so um elizabeth thank you for sharing that template and that experience with us we, we've just had a, a group experience of lexio and i think we all benefited from the freedom that you created for us by facilitating that for us. Mm -hmm. How would you go about doing this if you were by yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, very similarly. Um, the only difference would be that someone's not reading it for you, but there's a workaround. You can listen to scripture through a Bible app or online. Um, I think that's a great way to do Lectio by yourself um, so that you're getting both the auditory and, um, and the visual at the same time. Um, yeah, um, let me see if I had any other tips. Oh, also conversely, if you wanted to lead this with a group yourself, um, you could have more sharing in between sections as well, especially if the group has a lot of rapport built up already. I chose not, not to do that today because I wasn't sure who was coming and, um, what the experience would be like. And it can be distracting to hear what someone else is hearing in between, if this is a new practice for you. Um, but that's a great way to have more group engagement too. Mm. So um, I'm just curious how you incorporate this into your own life. You said that you, you make this is part of your relationship with, with Jesus. Um, 
yeah, how, how does it, how does that play out in your life? What are some ways we might make it part of our soul tending? Yeah. So I've used it differently in different seasons. Um, I've had the gift of getting to be led through it um, and in ministry uh, settings uh, through the ministry I work for. Um, and then also uh, like through sabbatical, for example, I got to do this often because I had a lot of time. Um, but on the daily when life is full and you're working and on normal things are going on, um, I would encourage people to do this practice uh, once a week or once a month, uh, when you have more time set aside, um, to actually feel like you can totally close off all other things and engage deeply. But if you have time and you really love it, you could use it even every day. So it's up to you. Um, just reflecting on your experience, what are some ways Lexio Divina has, has benefited you and maybe impacted your relationship with God? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Lectio Divina has helped me foster a deeper relationship with God, like a friendship um, in some ways, especially for me, the, um, the second and third portions, um, getting to really meditate and self-reflect on um, how these words apply to me, why they're coming up for me, and then honestly engaging with God um, in the prayer portion um, and engaging with the emotions that the scripture brings up for me has been really wonderful um, and has helped me have a, a more well-rounded, full experience of God. Um, and it's also been a really great opportunity to get to know brothers and sisters better as well. Um, and when you do it in a group setting and you get to hear them share, because you're allowing them to be part of a vulnerable place um, and vice versa. And that helps me to be able to see God in a new way through someone else's experience. So really intimacy has been the main fruit of doing Lectio Divina for me. And that's just a totally different track than what we often do as Western Christians, which is to study the word. And there's nothing wrong with study, but it's a different, it's a different experience of God, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I'm curious if anyone else has a, a question or some feedback or a reflection on what we've experienced tonight. Anybody? I think it's, it's just been very good and very helpful. Um, and I appreciate Elizabeth uh, sharing. Well, thank you. I'm glad it was good for you. Good for my soul. <laughs> I shared with Betsy that the timing of this was perfect. Um, I've had four conversations since two o'clock this afternoon that had left me feeling a little bit, um, not discouraged, but people are really carrying burdens and suffering. And I was feeling the weight of that and feeling helpless. Um, so for me, what really stood out was the um, pointing to the temporary versus the eternal mm. and the hope that comes from the fact that our living faith is eternal, that our salvation is eternal. Um, so for me, it was really a word of encouragement after a day of just walking with people who are, are, who are truly struggling um, so that it, it's kind of lifted me up and taken some of that weight that I don't think God ever intended me to be carrying mm -hmm. off my shoulders. So mm -hmm. your timing was perfect. Mm -hmm. well, praise God. Great. All right, I've got a question. You, you had us reflecting on some verses from an epistle. Mm -hmm. Does this work with any passage from the Bible? Are there are certain kinds of passages that lend themselves better to Lexio Divina. Well, that's a great question. That? It's a great question. Um, I think any passage um, is applicable. Some may feel more clunky based on like what you pick, um, and but by and large, any scripture is going to be um, a great way to engage. Um, especially, I think if you were to go through like the upper room discourse in John thirteen through seventeen, um, or any psalm, um, and but really um, any passage. Um, Maybe even, I would say aside from um, like the laws, but even that could be a way that God wants to say something to you. So yeah, you're opening yourself up to 
let him um, do something different than just breaking it down and studying it. So, but yeah, some do lend themselves more to the experience. Anyone else with a question or a thought before we wrap up? Well, I, I'm somebody that has loved doing inductive Bible study and learning with my brain. And I've been just inspired and thrilled by the things that God showed me in that kind of study. And I, I, I'm eager to learn from this kind of study as well. And it's very, um, well, it's so accessible. It's, it's almost, it's almost too easy, <laughs> but I, but it, it's wonderful. And then God is present. You know, it doesn't have to be hard. He's there. Yeah, and I, I liked the way it, it, like yesterday we had um, a picnic with a purpose and the emphasis was on listening and mainly it was about listening to people, but also listening to God. And I feel Ooh. like this, I, I feel like I listen more uh, with this. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's very good. And those skills right are in. those skills are transferable. When we develop them in our relationship with God, we become better listeners with people, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Elizabeth, what's one way we could pray for you, either personally or in your ministry? Oh, yeah, great. Thanks for asking. Um, I would love prayer for um, a slower pace, <laughs> um, just to, even to be doing this. Um, I think my um, the way that I had been walking with God through sabbatical was so rich and slow, and it's changed quite a bit, being back to work full time and things moving at a pretty rapid pace. So would love prayer that I can land where God wants me with my rhythms right now with him in particular. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Well, thank you, Barbara. Could I ask you to pray for Elizabeth? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, Heavenly father, I just pray for Elizabeth. I just pray for you to be just uh, with her and guide her as she tries to slow down just give her the opportunities to be slow and to be with you. And actually, I, I just uh, pray that for all of us, that we can slow down, that we can nurture on your word, that we can hear you, listen for the words that you want to impact us and let them seep deep inside us, help them to uh, help us to grow and flourish. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you.